It's not an obviously poor website, but there are subtle things that I think lead to poor conversion rates. Homepages, even though they may look good and function well as homepages, they're not always great landing pages for specific campaigns. Hey, this is Ryan from Web Eminence and have an interesting case study to share with you. So in the case of this client, uh, we were kind of going back and forth and I have known for months the homepage that we're using as the landing page for advertising is not great uh, as a landing page even though it looks like a nice site here i'm going to go through some details here and show you why this isn't a great landing page for advertising and show you the page that i created that's now getting better results but before we go through those details let me just show you some of the stats real quick so this is a clicks in blue and conversions in yellow, and we were struggling for months to try to get conversions. I knew something was wrong. I mean, all the keywords and everything in the campaign was tight and just targeted. So I knew there weren't issues there. Um, so I've always questioned the, the web page, and we actually had disagreement, the client and I, about whether that was an issue. So I finally um, got permission to create a new landing page and test it, and we activated it on July 23rd here. And you could just visualize here from the yellow line right away the conversions jumped, maybe double. Actually, I have a comparison here. If I compare two recent time periods, conversion rate uh, went up by about 269%, conversions were up 247%, so more than doubled in this time period. And actually the client emailed me, so I have that email too. It just says, uh, registrations improved significantly compared to the last couple months. So far, we got 22 registrations from the beginning of the month. In July, we had 29 and in June, 36. So yeah, probably on track to double. So that kind of matches the stats, the conversions that I'm tracking uh, here. Obviously, when you see those results, you know, you're probably wondering what, what was the big difference. And I think this is an interesting case study because it's not an obviously poor website, but there are subtle things that I think lead to poor conversion rates. Homepages, even though they may look look good and function well um, as homepages, they're not always great landing pages for specific campaigns. Obviously, when people land on this homepage, this image slider here takes up a large part of the page. So, I mean, they're nice images, but they look like they're out of a catalog too. So people might not really connect with that in terms of a local business this is a rack at their store so i like that but there's no text here it should have a pop-up come up soon we have the navigation at the top we have appointment which this client was adamant about having appointment at the top but i don't think people are ready to click an appointment button until they've read a little bit and understand something about this business so it says welcome to our seattle bridal store this is near seattle but not in seattle Here's a nice picture again that's, you know, more out of a catalog than anything. There's a lot of text in here, so I don't like large text blocks for landing pages. I like to have more, you know, headings and bullet points, maybe a paragraph that's like half the size of this. They do have another uh, call to action here, make an appointment. But again, I don't think people are ready for an appointment yet. Some nice pictures, but they're just, you know, Instagram photos. So you might send people to your Instagram page. So one thing you'll notice about this homepage is you're kind of sending people away from the page often. So the idea of a landing page is to keep people there and, and create calls to action so that there's one way to go. In this case, there's a lot of rabbit trails. So you can click browse dresses to go to a shop page. One thing I have always thought about this page is it comes off maybe as more of an e-commerce type page than a local business that someone can visit to view you know, bridal gowns. So you can browse dresses here. If you scroll down, you see more catalog type pictures with gown types. And again, you can browse dresses. So you're sending people down rabbit trails. Here are more links you can click. I'll just click on one so you can see. Uh, page is actually loading pretty slow right now too. So, you know, people can get a lot of details on a dress and then contact, or, I mean, they can get pictures. But again, it comes off maybe as a little bit more e-commerce where they're able to browse all the dresses online rather than come in the store, which is really what this client wants to happen. So we have this nice photo here of their boutique, which is great, which I like to feature, as you'll see on my landing page. And then it says customer feedback, our brides, which is a little confusing, but they do have a nice our brides page 
that has a lot of uh, testimonials and pictures from their brides, which I think is great social proof. But as you'll see on my page, I like to kind of summarize that and put it on the main landing page. So more text, a contact button, another kind of catalog, professional type image, more service links. So again, lots of links to send people down rabbit trails. Lots of links is fine for a home page, and that's what this is. But again, doesn't maybe work great for a landing page for advertising. So we don't have a lot of contact info until we get to the bottom. There's nothing about the location until we get to the bottom. So people don't have a strong connection with the location here. All they see is Seattle. They could click on contact, which then takes them to the address. So you're creating a little bit of friction here with um, giving people the opportunity to connect with the location. So that's something I tried to fix on my landing page. I'll also show you kind of how it would look on mobile, which probably is 70% of the traffic here. Uh, and notice the logo disappears or shrinks to this, which is, doesn't really mean much to people. And then the menu disappears too. So I think the mobile experience is probably even a little worse, but similar. Uh, and it is a long page, so there's a lot, a lot to scroll on mobile, which separates people from the you know calls to action as well. Now that I've shown you that, let's go to the page I created. And I, I do think there were a lot of good elements on this site. It's just that you're creating, again, a lot of friction, asking the visitor to click around the website and find the different pieces of info that they need, like the address. For an effective landing page, I like to have that all um, kind of more concise on a shorter page. So here's my landing page. Um, you notice the logo is a little bit larger. I actually have a large logo at the bottom too. So we're kind of uh, reinforcing that brand a little bit. There is a make appointment button at the top and the client insisted on this. I kind of wanted this to be a phone uh, number, a phone button here, phone call button like this one here. Cause I don't, again, I don't think people are ready to make an appointment right when they land on the page, they want to learn more. So I did use that image of the, the rack of gowns here, which I think is kind of a intriguing picture for a visitor. And I do have some text here, but I said, come and discover our extensive bridal gown collection. So I want to be really clear that the idea here is for people to visit. And then I, right away, I say located 20 minutes south of Seattle. So I'm very clear on the location. And then I picked this text out of there you know, the larger uh, blocks of text that they have. So if people read this, it's it's really good info. Um, and then right away they get a call button. So if they look at this on mobile, they're gonna see two buttons and they're gonna see all this text pretty early. So I think that's an important part of kind of the psychology of landing pages is having a lot of um, information and having calls to action visible on the, you know, above the fold, as they say, you know, before the scroll, what's available on this main page compared to what's available here is a lot better in terms of what people see before they scroll. So if we go down, the first thing I wanted to feature is again, that image you saw, but with no text over it, just images that reinforce that this is a local business somewhere where you can walk in and visit. And then to reinforce walking in, I thought this picture was great. I think I pulled this from their Google business profile, but just having a storefront, it, it, it's very clear that you can walk into this business from looking at these, these three photos here and it's inviting as opposed to the stock photos here, which again are nice, but they don't really communicate a store or a boutique that you can walk into. So again, these three photos, and then the map here to be really clear about where this place is located. And then uh, two calls to action, a make appointment button and a contact us, which is gonna bring people, it's just gonna jump them to the bottom of the page. So if people scroll down here, they're ready to take action. I think this is a good spot to have these calls to action. But if they scroll down more, they're gonna get more information. So I pulled this nice photo of the business owner. I think it's really good for people to connect with a person that they're gonna meet once they get there. Having this photo here, I think helps a lot. And I pulled some information from their About Us page. Once you get down this far, someone's probably interested in getting more info and they might take more time to read. So we provide that text to them here. And then we also provide some of the actual gown pictures. These aren't linked, so people can't click on these to go down rabbit trails, but at least they get a sense of, you know, the three different types or three of the different types of um, gowns that are available. 
And here's where I get into the Our Bride section. So I thought the Our Bride section of their website was really powerful, really good social proof, but I didn't think we needed to, first of all, make the visitor click to get there, but also wanted it to be shorter to summarize it. So we have three images here with real names and then a short paragraph to describe what this is. And people can click to view more on the site. And I actually didn't want to do this because it feels like a rabbit trail to me, but um, the client really wanted this here so people can go view more information on the brides. But if they do, they're going to land on the, the main website, which you know might take them down a rabbit trail and they might not be able to figure out how to contact. But um, you know I'm fine with that. So we have that button here, but they can get a quick summary of a few brides here. And actually I noticed this one's a link, which it's not supposed to be. So I need to remove that. So then we scroll down and that's the end of the page, but we have a nice uh, image here, clear contact info. So hours, phone, the location again, even though that was above, we have a main website link to take them to the main homepage. This is important for human visitors to kind of see that there is a main website but also it's good to connect this landing page, which is a subdomain, you know, back to the main website. I think Google likes to see that as well. And then a form here that people can fill out, which I can track as a conversion. And then again, once you get to the bottom, that logo is reinforced. So if I um, kind of shrink this down, you get a rough idea of what people see on mobile. So they will see the logo make appointment. I think mo on most phones, they'll see the call button towards the top of the screen, probably without even scrolling. And all those images and the map, um, you know, all the buttons. So the mobile version is not much different, it's uh, very similar. So again, a lot of these changes are subtle and I was a little surprised at how quickly that landing page produced an effect. So hopefully you can glean some insight from uh, that quick case study to improve your landing pages and the results of your campaigns. I'm curious to hear your comments on, uh, you know, if you agree with some of these changes, obviously it's hard to argue with those results. So feel free to comment below. Let me know what you think of these changes and how it can be improved. I have done a couple other videos on landing pages, so I'll link to one of those here and I'll see you there.